Bibles to John, the Gospel of John, chapter 15. John 15. Houston, find a Bible. Okay, good. John chapter 15. Now, I, uh, I've been having some issues with my voice. See, there it goes right there, cracking. I, uh, coming back from uh, St. Louis. Francisco, stop talking, please. I mean, unless you're helping Angel. Is that what you're doing? All right, then I forgive you. Do what? Uh, uh, I'll get there. Just John chapter 15. John chapter 15, we're going to read the first 11 verses. John 15, we're going to read the first 11 verses. I, uh, my voice, now let me get back to what's important, my voice. I, uh, <laughs> I was coming back from uh, St. Louis and I crossed the Mississippi uh, last Wednesday in, uh, to Illinois and I got hit with um, every symptom of the, well, almost every symptom. Thank goodness, not the one that keeps you near facilities. Um, but uh, I got hit with just about every symptom of the flu, uh, of the flu, and uh, felt te- uh, just absolutely terrible. Um, but I woke up after a long night. Uh, I, I, after about the midnight mark, roughly in that area, I took two a leave to kind of te- help with the headache a little bit. But I woke up and felt uh, I felt nine. I felt I didn't feel a hundred percent, but I felt ninety percent. Anybody ever had the one-day flu, the one-day flu? Yeah, and it just comes and goes, and it's, whoa, that's like a flash. But I am I still have some effects in, in, the, um, in my voice here, and uh, I'm afraid if you haven't been on YouTube or social media or, or Facebook, um, the, uh, the mic, and it's been a, a, a great work in progress over the last several months, but Brother Alex Williams, more so than anyone, but uh, uh, with myself and kind of, uh, holding the flashlight, so to speak, and Brother Dan and, and different folks kind of pitching in and, and, and tweaking and tinkering and tightening up different things with microphones and the audio and the visual. Um, the, qu- the sound quality, Brother Alex, from today's message, it just each week it sounds better and better. I know we're not changing anything, um, uh, but uh, there's not a whole lot of room for improvement. So what I'm afraid of tonight is that the, the great audio that we have here is going to catch every little crack <laughs> in my voice. So just don't record. It. No, I'm kidding. Um, but uh, I appreciate Brother Alex and, and um, his, um, I don't have to go all into it, but the sacrifices that he is, he's, he's given, um, computers and audio equipment and visual and things like that for, uh, uh, for the church. And it, uh, it, it's going to go a long way. I know it is. So Uh, We have even a a podcast planned for the future, so um, uh, got good things coming. So what I want you to do is, is if you're open to John chapter 15, we're going to read in verse number 1 through verse number 11. Uh, We're going to pray, and I'm going to hop right into this um, uh, uh, quickly. Jesus is speaking here. He says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth, as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye, continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, yea, uh, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Heavenly Father, bless this time tonight. Help us to be fruit bearers. 
um, um, help us not uh, uh, our effectiveness uh, not to um, uh, dry up. Help us not to be a branch that doesn't bring forth fruit. Um, Lord, if, if we haven't, change us. Uh, Lord, not, none of us want to be as, uh, of no profit to the heavenly kingdom and no profit to you. Help us to be fruit bearers. <coughs> um, and then, Lord, um, help us to understand uh, that uh, uh, the trials of life, the purgings of life are not necessarily punishment, but to bring forth more fruit. For your glory, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I can't speak for the whole world, and neither can you. Um, and thanks to Google, we can pull up statistics and numbers and stats and consensuses and um, uh, all kinds of different things. But uh, on average, <coughs> Americans spend billions, billions of dollars trying to um, buy or create joy. Um, and it comes in every form and every fashion. Um, uh, but this is something that each and every person needs to realize is that joy is not for sale. You can't buy joy. Buy is not, uh, uh, a joy is not something that is bought. It is for that quick little moment, but it is not something that is sustainable. Um, anybody ever have buyer's remorse? Buyer's remorse. You buy something thinking it would bring you that, that thing, position you, your heart, uh, to that position of joy and uh, 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 being elated, but only to find out that you can't buy joy. Uh, Americans spend billions of dollars a year trying to buy joy. Americans spend billions of dollars a year trying to overcome depression. The, uh, the, anti, the, depress the depression industry in our country, I, I don't remember the last year that I, that I saw um, uh, quoted, but it, it, on average, it's a $13.5 billion industry. $13.5 billion industry on depressants and antidepressants and um, uppers, and that's all they are is uppers and downers um, with a legalized name given to you legally through the government. Um, and I, I have a great respect for doctors and the amount of work it takes to get through medical school, but many of them are just glorified drug dealers. Many of them forget their Hippocratic Oath. This isn't a, a, a um, I'm not trying to joust in any way, shape, or form with doctors or rib them in any way, um, but I, I think some of them can get jaded as well as any other industry um, about red tape and regulations and big government overreach. But it's, it, it's difficult to find a genuine doctor who really, truly, you as a patient feel like they care. Um, uh, and you're not just another BMV uh, a customer for the day. Take a number. But uh, uh, Americans are spending billions of dollars trying to find contentment, trying to find joy, and they, and, and they spend it on uh, uh, covering up their depression by buying things. He who, who, who has the most toys at the end wins, or who, he who dies with the most toys wins, or they try to um, manage that depression with putting money into uh, uh, pills and whatnot. Um, you can't buy happiness even. You can buy it for a moment. Happiness comes from the word happenings. It lasts for a moment, but then it's gone. Joy is something that is sustainable. But Americans, they also spend billions of dollars a year on entertainment. Entertainment to amuse ourselves, to take our minds off of what it is, the real problems. I told Brother Greg Branding in the back today after church, I said... Um, uh, we were talking about the, the message for the day and, and doing a lot of self-examination and how the Bible says in the book of James that the Bible is like, like, a, like a glass. It's, almost, it's like a mirror and how we can, we're supposed to look inwardly and know ourselves. And, and, and um, I said a lot of people don't like themselves. They don't want to hear themselves. A lot of people are running, saved and lost, are running from their past, are running from mistakes, are running from um, abusive, broken fractured homes they don't want to remember and I said man if the if the system in the world ever goes down the the uh, um, electronic age the google age the internet age and we got to go back to ink and paper type but there'll be more suicides then than there are that than there are now because people would be trapped inside of here thinking that they're crazy when really they're not crazy at all. That voice has been there all along and we've just had so much noise, noise pollution, that we've drowned out those voices in our head. 
Um, that's why a lot of people have sleeping problems. Uh, the Lord, the Bible says that God giveth his beloved sleep. He giveth his, now it doesn't mean that if you don't, if you have a hard time sleeping, the Lord doesn't love you. It's not what it means. Uh, and I'm not here to, to surmise that there's only one issue of why you can't sleep. There's chemically, there's caffeine, there's a uh, uh, guilty conscience. There's all kinds of reasons of why we can't sleep. Uh, but uh, millions and millions or billions and billions of dollars on trying to fabricate this, this um, facade, this mask of joy. Billions and billions of dollars on entertainment. Entertainment. And then what's in the end? What's in the end? A short-term solution for a long-term problem. A short-term solution for a long-term problem. Isn't that what we do? We sat around as kids and we're like, man, I'm bored. What do you want to do? I'm bored. What do you want to do? We go and find something to do until we can't do it anymore. And then the very next day, we're sitting around doing the same thing, going, well, I'm bored. What do you want to do? I'm, I don't know, I'm bored. What do you want to do? And we, go and we, we play basketball. We rob the neighbors. <laughs> we play with the dog. We go walk on the beach. We ride our bikes. We go exploring. I remember one time, uh, Jamal, Travis Gibson, and I, uh, kind of bored, rode our bikes. This is uh, Elmwood area when we lived over there, and we got... Um, uh, we came all the way up to, uh, oh, Niagara, I think it is. If you go over, if you go down Anthony and go over the railroad tracks there, there's a gas station on your right, go over the railroad tracks, go to where the, uh, the dam is there. And if, if you go right up on the right, on the, the, the River Greenway is what they used to call it. And there was a, a, a makeshift bike park back there made out of dirt ramps and all kinds of neat things. And, and we just stayed on that trail forever. We ended, up, we ended up out on North River Road in New Haven by, um, uh, I guess that'd be the uh, north end of Broadway Street in New Haven. And uh, so that's kind of about as far up as you can go, and they just redid all that. Uh, uh, but we, why? Why did we ride out that far? We came out going, we have no idea where we are. We just kept riding and riding and riding and riding because we had nowhere else to be. We had nothing else to do. We were just looking to entertain ourselves. Now, that was free, amen. But the world itself is saying, well, in order to be happy, we've got to spend money. In order to fulfill these holes in our heart and these gaps in our life, we have to spend money. And that's, that's just not true. That's just not true. Uh, and not just uh, uh, Americans, but Christian Americans. Christian Americans are um, uh, pitching in their millions they're millions. We may not make up the whole billions, but we're throwing in our millions. We're throwing in our millions, spending millions of dollars a year on um, uh, Christian self-help books. And I'm for Christian health self books. I think they're a supplement. I think they're supplemental. Um, uh, and uh, Christian psychologists and um, uh, the, the TV preachers, the, po the, the uh, positive thinking, the power of positive thinking Teachers and preachers, do you just put a smile on your face and uh, uh, think yourself rich type of thinking? And what, 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 what's the end result? The end result is these guys don't have the answer either. These guys are there and they're filling their 45-minute gap because they're looking for the same thing that they're telling all these people that are that they're telling all these people how to find. This just so happened that they found their niche, they found their lane, and it's bringing in them the, their money to live their best life, so to speak. Now, uh, a, a lost man, get this now, a lost man can never have true joy because he does not have Christ. Do you know the only people on earth that can have true joy are saved people? That's it, nobody else. Everyone else is exempt from real, true joy. I don't care how many puppies you save, I don't care how, how many kittens you, you, you save. I don't care how many whales you save. I don't care how many homeless people you feed and um, uh, 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 mistreated children you help and battered mothers you, ha you house. I don't care how many good deeds you do and how much joy you think you have. You cannot have real, authentic joy without Christ. You know, you may have, there's a big difference between a Rolex and anybody ever heard of a Folex? It's just a fake Rolex, a Folex. But they both do the same thing. One tells time, or bo they both tell time. 
but only one of them is really valuable. Only one of them is authentic. Only one of them is the, what do they say, the real McCoy. That one carries value through the ages. Uh, somebody was telling me about a, um, a music piece that their family had owned, and uh, when they were a kid, they took it to school with them, and their, um, their uh, band instructor in school said, what, do you know, you do not play that. Do you know what you have? A musical instrument. And they said, do you know what you have? And this person said, no. And they said, you, this, there's only like 80 of those. Do not, don't use that. Go to the closet and get out another one. Don't use that one. Well, that, that young boy took that, that instrument home and said, hey, my music teacher said this was a such and such a type of instrument and that we shouldn't use it because it's very rare. And they said, and he told me, he said that they never believed him. And Hurricane Katrina came along, wiped out their home, wiped out the musical instrument, destroyed it. What? Man, that's crazy. Lost all kinds of um, uh, stamp collections and baseball card. I have a baseball, not just baseball, but a card collection. And um, sometimes, or, or some of you have coin collections and different things like that. And sometimes you hear of a special coin. What do you do? You go through and you're looking for that. And sometimes you'll come up with something very similar, very similar, but it's not it. It's not it. That one little mistake on that coin or that one little detail on that coin or that card or that stamp makes all the difference. Makes all the difference. But you were so close, right? I'm not here to tell you today that lost people can't smile and laugh and have full hearts. I'm not here to tell you that they can't enjoy life. I'm not telling you that they're not enjoying life. But I am telling you, if they don't have the Jesus ingredient, they can't have real joy. They can't. That's not a matter of opinion, that's truth. Um, now, lost man, uh, since he cannot have real joy, he has come up with all these ways to, to devise amusements, all these ways to keep them distracted, all these ways to keep their minds off of things. Um, uh, they have to have something to occupy their time, to keep their mind off of the real problem. Folks, what is the real problem? The real problem is that they're going to die and go to hell. The real problem is that they have to face a God and they are in denial. That's the real problem. A real problem could become a great solution if they would just face the facts. Now, far too many, uh, far too, too often, uh, Christians... Uh, we think that we have to endure the Christian life, which is a sad thing. Um, uh, I pulled up this morning into the Kroger parking lot. Um, I wanted some orange juice. I had a hankering for some orange juice. And um, I grabbed a couple other things, some coffee and whatnot, and, and I, I did not get out of the car. I didn't get out of the vehicle until I felt like I could look like a Christian. You said, what are you told? You could look like a Christian. I had, a, I had this on. I was wearing this. Everybody knew I was going. To, I mean, they didn't guess. They knew I was going to church. I mean, they had to have guessed. But I, I'm not getting out of the church looking like I'm walking on my bottom lip. Or I'm not getting out of the car looking like I'm walking on my bottom lip. I'm not getting out of the car at um, 8.30 on a Sunday morning where all these people are getting their groceries and their, their beer run for Sunday and their... Um, uh, stuff for family lunch and, and all these pe get, people are walking in their pajamas, walking in, doing whatever it is they're doing. I'm not walking in front of them. Not that I owe them an explanation, but I owe him a representation. I owe him a representation. And I want to look the part. So I got out. I did not get out until I felt like I could, as Miss Harrington would say, raise my eyebrows. Put a smile on my face, my, sh my, my, my chin up and my shoulders back, my chest out, and walk in there like a peacock. No, and walk in there and, and, and look like I was happy to be headed where I was headed. Um, far too many Christians, we, 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 uh, uh, we feel like we have to endure the Christian life while a lost person gets to have just the most, excuse me, <coughs> wonderful time. Lost people get to live it up while we have to endure Christianity, and that's a sour, that's a, a, a poor attitude, an unfortunate attitude, but the truth is, a lost person, and I've said this many, many times, a lost person had better live it up as best they can. 
A lost person who is in denial of Christ had better get as rich as they can and as much stuff as they can and have as many experiences and have the biggest, longest bucket list that they possibly can before they kick the bucket because this is as heaven as they get. This is as close to heaven. This is their heaven. But on the other hand, the, 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 a Christian and our experiences, this is as close to hell as we're going to ever get. Now, that right there is a blessing. That right there is a blessing. Now, I know it can always get worse. It could be worse, and it could be, but it can never be as eternal damnation and burning in hell fire forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and never, ever, no, not ever, getting out. I, that's, I'm never going to have to go through that. I may lose a leg. I may go blind. I may lose my hearing. I may, um, I, uh, I may lose a family member. I may lose my life early. I'm something bad. I could, I could go to financial ruin, health ruin. I could lose my friends. I could go through a Job-like experience. I could do anything and everything. My life could go down the toilet, so to speak. I could live on the street, hoping that a Christian would give me something to eat. Amen. I could be living on the street one day, but I'm not going to hell. I could backslide and run away from the Lord, but he's still not throwing me in hell. This is as bad as it gets for the Christian, and that's a blessing. That's a blessing for me. There's a bug up here. Get out of here. So as bad as it may get, still a Christian can have joy if he desires, if she desires to be joyous. A Christian can have joy what they desire to have. But I don't want to just desire to have it. I want to desire what God desires, and God desires his children to be joyous people, happy people. God wants his children, he said it right here in the book of John, uh, that he desires us to have joy. Jesus desires us to have joy and be full of joy because he's provided a way for us to have it. If he did not want us to have it, he wouldn't have provided a way. Just as Pastor Jackson spoke this morning, and um, uh, he talked about saving our eternal soul. Yes, of course, but not just our soul, our life. He provided not only a way for our soul to, to, to spend eternity, or excuse me, our spirit to spend eternity in heaven with Jesus. And, and, and not only that, uh, and I know resurrected body, and I, I get all that, uh, 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 but our life. We don't have to go, okay, I'm saved, and now I just got to sit around and twiddle my thumbs. no. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, all things are become new. Your marriage can be new. Your relationships with your family can be new. Your principles of life can be new. Your outlook can be new. Your goals and your hopes and your dreams can be new. Paul said, putting those things which are behind, and he had a bad, be he, a bad behind. He had a bad past. He had, he had a, thank you for laughing. He had a bad past. He put, he separated families. He put people in prison. He was the first one standing by holding the coats of those throwing the stones at Stephen. He was responsible for bloodshed of people he would one day call brothers and sisters in Christ. I don't want to forget that. If anybody had a past they would want to forget in the Bible, Paul was one of them. Paul was one of them. One of the many, by the way. And you may, you, you may have that also, but, but um, he didn't just save you to save you. He saved you to live for him. He saved you to live for him. So um, uh, uh, from the outset, uh, we must realize that um, there are uh, many, many misconceptions. I saw a total friend of mine. I said, I, as a pastor, I want to help erase a lot of the misconceptions about heaven, hell, and eternity and Christianity. Uh, but there are misconceptions about how to obtain it. If God made a way to obtain it, well, then how do we get it? If he made a way, how do I get joy? Uh, here you go. For, here's an example for you. Joy does not come from, um, it doesn't come from reading a book unless it's the Bible. But neither does it come from um, knowing your spiritual temp. How do I, um, uh, I listened to a fellow, he's a philosopher, his name's Jordan excuse me, Jordan Peterson. Don't know if he's saved or not. I haven't heard too much about him. Besides, he seems to be a, um, pretty smart guy, um, but he talks about, um, about knowing yourself, knowing what triggers you, knowing what kind of people not to be around, knowing what kind of situations, all these five different aspects of your, your temperament. But joy doesn't come from a, um, a being a totally in touch with yourself. Uh, uh, 
It doesn't come by all these positive thinking things. Joy comes from God. Let's get that very clear tonight. Joy comes from God. Say that back to me. Say, joy comes from God. Not Joel Olstein. Joy comes from God. Not, hey, no, no, I don't know. It, it doesn't come from Joyce Meyer. It does, hey, joy does not come from Jake Jackson. Joy does not come from winning the lottery. I've never won the lottery, but if I did win the lottery, I, I, I'd be happy, but I know that it's still not making my kids obey. It's still, it, it's still not fixing these chronic aches that I have. It's still, I'm not saying that I have. I'm not saying that my kids disobey. I'm saying it doesn't fix life's problems. What it does is, is it adds problems. Do you know the more stuff you have, the more stuff you have to be aware? Do you, you ever heard the term addition by subtraction? Subtract material, add peace. Subtract, and I'm not saying everybody should live as a hobbit and everybody should live as a miser and everybody should do should live minimalist. Let's all move out to the hills of California and, and no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying you don't have to have stuff to be happy. You don't have to have stuff to have joy. Joy comes from God. And the Bible, your Bible is a prescription book. Did you know that? Did you know your Bible is full of prescriptions? You ever been to the doctor and the doctor wrote you a prescription? A prescription and you're like, just another thing to take. Just another thing. But the thing about God's prescriptions is they all work. Many times you go to the doctor and the doctor will say, well, let's try this. And you'll go and take it and it will have an adverse effect. Oh, you'll go and take this and, and, and it won't start working right away. Well, you have to keep taking it to get it into your system. Everybody thinks that obeying a Bible verse this one time is a cure-all. Unless it's, dear God in heaven, I know that I'm a sinner and I believe on your son, Jesus Christ, to save me. That is the only immediate prescription. That's the only one. Well, um, the others, they may take a time or two to get into your system. They may take a time or two to start working to, for your body to recognize them and say, okay, this is something that we got to start using here. And this is something that we, and I know, I know there's some, uh, I've used it many times, but a soft answer turneth away wrath. It doesn't always work. It works a lot of times. It doesn't always work. And that doesn't mean that the Bible's failing. It just means that sometimes things take time to work. So when the Bible writes you a prescription, start using it. Start using it. So when the Bible says this is how you obtain joy, you're not just going to like read that Bible verse and go, ah, I'm so full of joy. No, you have to put it into practice. You have to start taking it. Start taking it. Now, um, uh, uh, the Bible has uh, 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 many, many prescriptions. And everything in life involves these two things. It's called cause and effect. Say that. Say cause and effect. Yes, good, cause and effect. You cannot have ef the effect, in this case, joy, which is your effect, without proper cause. You have to have something that causes joy. What causes joy? What causes these things? You know, too many people are um, religious on just Sunday. No, did you know Sunday is supposed to be the culmination of everything we did out on Monday through Saturday? It's the day we come together and praise the Lord. It's the day we come together and kind of re and top off the tank. Some folks come in empty. I get churches up can be many things to many different people. But it's one main thing if for a mature for a mature Christian is not just kind of putting on church on Sunday and being religious. No, my religion is Monday through Saturday and I come in together and we all talk about it and worship it worship about it and, 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 um, uh, 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 and, and, and uh, uh, get together about it. But you know one thing that causes me joy, and it's not that I'm uber spiritual, is Sunday morning church causes me joy. Amen. There's a cause. The cause, I, or the effect I get from the cause is joy from church. I go the places that they lift my spirit. I listen to the songs that that lift my spirit, that break my heart, that convict me, that there's a cause and effect. Cause and effect. Now, we need to discover Christians today, tonight, from our church, can't do anything about everybody else's church members, can't do anything about everybody else, but we can do something about us. We need to discover from the Bible what, what causes joy. What causes it? 
Um, uh, People don't ever come up to me and say, why are you so happy? Why are you so joyous? But I think people get an idea that I like to joke and I like to laugh. I had, a, I had to rein it in this morning. I mean, it was just like back to back to back, boom, boom, boom. And I'm like, okay, let's slow it down. I like to laugh. I like, man, I, I like to laugh. I, no, I don't like it. I love to laugh. I like to have a good time. I like to joke. I like to find the lighter side of things because, man, the world is dark enough. I like to find the things that make the heart light. Now, we as Christians can stay on top side by applying the Bible prescription for joy. The Bible prescription for joy. If you want joy, there's a, um, uh, oh, I don't think we have it in our songbook, but I have a songbook. It's called Rejoice, and I believe it's a hymn in that one. And, and there's a song, it's called If You Want Joy. And it says something, that I don't know the tune to it, but it says, if you want joy, real joy, wonderful joy, let Jesus come into your heart. Amen, but that's nice, and it's a great song, right? I mean, and, and we feel that that's true. That's, man, that's got some truth. But folks, when Jesus comes into our heart, he didn't, he didn't just make me joyful. He didn't just make me peaceful. When Jesus came into my heart, I didn't have the peace that passes all understanding. I didn't have, brother, I didn't have a bunch of brotherly love. I didn't have um, kindness, goodness, meekness, temperance. I didn't have all those. When Jesus came into my heart, he saved me. He saved me. But the truth is, and I'm jumping ahead in my notes here, I'm I'm not going to. I'm going to just, there's another one. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Oh, man, we love that song. And then, man, that's a, that's a, that's a rouser right before we get it, pull up to the church and let you off into your Sunday school teacher's classroom and let Brother Pip and Miss White and uh, Miss Sarah, and Brother Jackson and Brother Kevin with all those young people he has uh, get all robbled, roused by uh, the joy, joy, joy. Now, that's, it's a nice song, and, and it's, um, uh, uh, but it's, it's, there's, there's some air in it. You don't just have it. You don't just have joy. It's something that you obtain. It's something that you, I'm getting ahead here, but I want you to trust what I'm saying. It's something you now have access to. You have access to joy. You don't just have it. You don't just automatically, you don't just, it doesn't just automatically, automatically arrive when you say in Jesus' name, amen, I've trusted him as my savior. And I'm full of joy. No, 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 no. Many Christians are misinformed. There's that word again, misinformed informed or misinformation. Remember, the devil is a great deceiver. He is a liar. He is a liar. And if you think since you got saved, he stopped lying to you, then you're lying to yourself. A lot of Christians, they think just because they got saved, everything's just going to be fine and hunky-dory. That's not true. That's not true. Um, uh, when you get saved, and I, I told Crystal and Ernesto, Alex, I, I, I might have told you also, I said, but brother, when you get saved, you're your troubles, they begin to multiply because you've got trouble as a human. You've got trouble as just a person. You gotta live in this world, but now you're saved. Now you've joined a a spiritual army that wrestles not against flesh and blood, but against the prince of the power of the air. Spiritual warfare. You've just invited, you've just signed up for a war. Uh, your troubles are, are <clears throat> uh, beginning anew. So what I want you to see is we have an adversary, the Bible says in First Peter. We have an adversary, the devil, who is looking to devour you, and he's going to do anything, and he's going to do everything he can do, he can do to keep us from winning souls, from reading your Bible, from building a Sunday school class, from building a bus route, and, 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 and from, perform- from cleaning the church the best you can, from... Um, uh, doing any ministry, anything you can for the Lord, in the name of Christ, he's gonna try to keep you from doing it. He knows that he can no longer take you to hell, but he knows that he can take your Christian testimony. So get that, he knows he can take your, your testimony. So when I talk about joy, I'm not, I'm not talking about, um, what do we have anything to do that's fun in Fort Wayne? Nothing. Uh, <laughs> who said the zoo? I said fun. Fun. Oh wow. Okay, we gotta get. You jumped out of an airplane, and you think the zoo is fun? 
Well, it doesn't take a lot to get you going, does it? Uh, j- jumping out of an airplane and going to the zoo does not produce joy. Now, if that parachute doesn't open, you will enter into eternal joy. Uh, but um, uh, uh, it doesn't produce joy. It produces the thrill of the moment. It produces um, uh, 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 this, this, uh, the, the, uh, this moment of happiness, but it doesn't produce lifelong, lifelong and sustainable joy. Um, uh, I've d- rode uh, roller coasters. Anybody ever been on a roller coaster? Man, I like roller coasters. I like them. And you get off going, man, that was fun. Let's do it again. Why do I want to do it again? I want to produce that same, wah, and I want to do it over and over and over. Let's go find a bigger one. Let's go find a faster one. Let's go find one with nine loops. Let's go find something that spins and loops and goes upside. What was it? The Superman at Six Flags Over America. You are the Superman, and you were on your belly. Let's see. On your belly, upside down, and inverted. At, at, in a loop. It was a blast. Let's do it again. There's one called the Raging Bull. You went underground. Uh, there's one called the Batman. You're going straight toward a wall. And then you take a left. It's, it's fantastic. It's a blast. What are we looking to do in life? We're looking to reproduce these moments that brought us these, 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 uh, these things of joy and excitement and happiness over and over and over and over again. But here's the thing about being a human. It's called tolerance. That roller coaster became boring after a while. It's time to find something new. But this, and that's the, the devices of this world are ever uh, innovating to keep mankind eyes shelled over, scaled over from truth. If the devil, man, uh, uh, there's more truth in the, the movie Pinocchio, the old school Pinocchio, than a lot of churches have these days, and it's being led away to some stinking amusement park, and you get turned into a donkey at the end of the day, getting made fun of, using to be, I don't even know, it's been years and years and years since I've seen that movie, but I know Pinocchio was turned into a donkey, and he was used to, in some work camp somewhere, and that's the truest thing about sin, is it will allure you, but once it's got you, and you got big stupid looking ears, and a big old fat front face, and a big old um, uh, 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 funky smelly body, and the devil's used you up, he's taken you, he's going to make you pay more than you want to pay, make you stay longer than you want to stay, and take you further, and I mean doing things that you never thought you would do, take you further than you ever wanted to go. That's what sin does. What, what do they say about sin? Sin, um, Uh, Sin finds you, sin binds you, and sin grinds you. That's what sin does. Well, God says, I don't want you to have sin. And by the way, if you have been found by sin and bound by sin and ground by sin, I am the potter and you are the clay. Take your ground up life and put it into the hands of God and let him refold you and remold you and remake you into something new. And you can say amen on that. You can say amen on that. Yeah, that's disingenuous. Brother Watts would be disturbed in you guys. Uh, But um, uh, So I'm not talking about joy, about this fake joy, uh, Six Flags joy. I'm not talking about uh, season tickets to your favorite game joy. That's not joy. The influence the world has affected over us has been detrimental to Christian homes and churches everywhere. Somehow we've decided that joy is associated with fishing and bowling and, fo- and football and, um, uh, and, and uh, gluttonous eating and golfing and any activity that uh, keeps us busy and, and not serving others. We've been swept into this humanistic philosophy, and I can't stand Christmas time because every Christian wants to buy into it with buying a bunch of stupid, stinking, China-made garbage, thinking that we give our children joy over the, over the trash we buy them that ends up in a barrel somewhere. We've been swept into this and swept up with this philosophy as to what brings joy. However, there is a way, there is a way that every Christian can have real, honest to goodness, authentic joy. I'm going to give you two points in nine minutes. Number one, you don't get joy because you get saved. You don't get joy because you get saved. Automatically, as I said before. Uh, Some of the saddest people I've ever known have been Christians. I mean, I mean, some of the most sad, despondent, down people I've ever known have been Christians. 
Now, why are they sad? I want you to ask yourself why they're sad. And I mean um, continually and habitually sad. Why? Very, very simple. They are backslidden. They're backslidden. When I was the, at the, the most sad point in my life, it was because I was backslidden. I was backslidden. When I was on the verge of depression, in my own estimate, it's because I was backslidden. <clears throat> do you, folks, do you know anybody who's happier than a backslidden Christian? I'll tell you who. The people who are happier than a backslidden Christian. Who's just happier than a backslidden Christian? A lost man. Why is a lost man, a, a lost man? Brother Jackson, a lost man's happier than a backslidden Christian? Absolutely. Um, uh, uh, I think, as Pastor Jackson said this morning, some of the most dangerous Christians are wounded Christians. The most dangerous Christians are wounded Christians. Now, it's true that Christ uh, uh, enters you when you get saved, but um, uh, you do not receive the fullness of his joy as a result of his entering your heart. You don't just, hey, I'm joyful all the time. That's just not the, fa- that's not the fact of the matter. You'll still find... Um, Excuse me, you will not find any place in the Bible that says when you get saved, you get joy. Joy is a byproduct of getting saved. It is not, a, it is not the product. When you got the product, being Jesus, you don't get, uh, a, there's not a bunch of other products. They are byproducts. Um, uh, the, the songs that I referenced earlier about, uh, about joy, uh, they're sweet, they're awesome, but they are not um, on, on, totally on point. Uh, I know Christians who, uh, who, who are depressed. Anybody ever hear, know a Christian? And you can reference yourself. Anybody ever know a Christian that's been depressed? Depressed? Yeah, I, I've known plenty of them. I've known Christians who've been depressed and have gotten out of it, and Christians who've been depressed and stayed in it and are still dating in it. And I'm not talking about folks who are um, uh, chemically imbalanced or... Um, uh, they've suffered um, mental trauma. I'm not talking, I'm just talking flat out depressed. Um, and I don't think you can throw everybody in the same pot and be like, well, that, that person's um, uh, bipolar and that person's PhD, uh, PhD, PTSD and that person's uh, uh, whatever and that person's, and we kind of all throw them in a, so, no, it's different. It's different. Um, uh, now, there, there, I, I, there's no reason for a child of God not to have joy. Is there a reason for you to be sad? Yes. Is there re- are there reasons that cause us to be despondent and down? Yes. But there's no reason for us to stay there because God has given us the reason to have joy. Man, I'm hungry. Oh, goodness gracious, I'm hungry. I'm so hungry. Man, I'm hungry. Okay, well, here's access to food. Why stay hungry? Why stay hungry? It, it doesn't, it, it makes no sense. Just as a child of God should should not uh, want for for joy, you must you have to remember that uh, you don't get joy because you get saved. You don't get joy just because you got saved. Number one, you don't get joy just because you got saved. Number two, uh, once saved, joy becomes available. Once saved, joy becomes available. I know I may sound redundant, but I want you to get it. I want you to get it. Get off this misconception. Don't let the devil deceive you anymore. Let's get clarity on where joy comes from. I know this is more of a, a, uh, maybe a Wednesday type of message, but um, a message is a message as long as the Bible's opened up. So uh, 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 even though joy does not arrive automatically at salvation, you can have joy. God has a recipe for your joy. God has a recipe, a solution, a, uh, uh, a, um, a, a way of making it available for you and I both to have joy. So when you get saved, joy becomes available to you. Uh, here we go. Let me illustrate. When I, this is going to need a battery soon. When I, how, how wide is this, Brother Alex? Okay. When I go into a restaurant, wow, man, listen to that. That sounds good. When I go into a restaurant, um, uh, many times driving a truck, I try not to eat fast food. I try to find restaurant food, real food, uh, the best that I can. Uh, sometimes it's, it, it's difficult, but um, many times I'm able to find some real food. Uh, uh, I'm out on the road. Uh, I'll stop into that restaurant because I'm hungry, right? I went into that restaurant because I was hungry. So I go into the restaurant. Did I automatically become full because I walked into the restaurant? No. I had to be seated. I was handed a menu. But when I went into the restaurant, what was made available to me? Anything on the menu, 
Food was made available to me. Now, if I do what I'm supposed to do, and the chef does what he's, and the waitress or the waiter and the chef does what they're supposed to do, guess what's going to end up on my table? Food. But just because the food is on my table, does that mean I'm full? No. I have to consume that food. So how do I get full? Well, first I've got to be hungry. I got to be hungry. They that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. So I've got to be hungry. Then I've got to find that restaurant, and I've got to walk into that restaurant. Then I've got to find the menu and order something off the menu and then consume what was put on my table. It's the same thing. Just because I got saved doesn't mean I automatically became full or became, uh, became joyful. Just because I came to church did not make me full of joy. Just because I, just because, oh, and I know what I said, what? I came to church and that made me joyful. It's because I've, I'm a mature Christian, amen? Uh, uh, I'm, I think I am. Uh, what do they say? As a man thinketh in his heart? That right there sounds like to me, um, uh, the Bible was ahead of its time. If you think yourself happy, you are, right? If you think yourself sad, you kind of like this time where we think we're, oh, anyway, uh, anything you think you can be, you can be, amen? <laughs> America, the land of opportunity. Uh, uh, so, so, like I said, I've walked into this restaurant. Uh, the food was am- available to me. So if I do what I'm supposed to do, I'll be filled up. And it's the same thing with your being saved. It doesn't mean you're automatically having joy. It means that as a child of God, joy is now available to you. Joy is made available to you. Just like this morning, you get saved, but a new life is available to you. You don't have to take it. You're making a mistake by not taking it. You're making a mistake, but God's recipe for joy contains the cause that results in the effect of joy. If you do what you are supposed to do, the result will be joy. The result will be joy. Now, some Christians are angry with God. They're angry with God. Because they got saved, and uh, they didn't automatically, they, 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 they heard lies from TV preachers, and they heard lying testimonials, and they heard all these different, they, they, heard, false, uh, they heard false witness about how, they got, how somebody gave their testimony on TV, and they got saved, and immediately... I mean, immediately, they said the words amen, and no longer did the M syllable come off of their lips that their life instantaneously changed, and everything started falling their way, and everybody started loving them, and they started loving everyone, and everything was roses. So this person hears this testimony on TV, and they go, I want to be saved too, so they get saved, and their life does the opposite. It's sour. So what do they do? They get mad at God because their life didn't turn into joy unspeakable and full of glory. But folks, it's not God's fault, it's their fault. People have said to pastors all across our nation, oh, pre- preachers, uh, I thought when I got saved, I'd be happy. I thought when I got saved, everything in my life would change. We, we, we've say, I've said that so many times. It's been a great change since I've been born again. Yeah, that's all. That, that sounds great, and it rhymes, and, and, and we've sang it, and we have the greatest intentions in singing it. But the truth of the matter is, is, is no. There came a great possibility of change when you got saved. Change comes from the, con- the conformity to this book. Now, I, I, wa- I don't want there to be any misunderstandings from you to me. I know that when you get saved, there is a great change in you. Amen. You've went from from hell, from the destination of hell to heaven. And when you got saved, you went from unbelief to belief. I know that when you got saved, there was a, a, um, a, a spiritual and molecular DNA change in you that your name was written. In. There was a great um, a eternal change, but the practical change, the change of the do's and the don'ts and the thou shalt and shalt nots and the ways of thinking and the ways that I know Christians still today who have a problem with, oh, I didn't mean to say that. They still say cuss words. Did that mean they not get saved? No. It means that they don't have the fullness of spiritual maturity in themselves yet. It's the same thing with joy. It's the same thing with joy. And sometimes joy is that big old fish that you just can't, sometimes you catch it and sometimes you don't. Well, why is that? Because we don't follow the cause and effect of the Bible. The cause and effect of a Bible. Now, I'm, this, this message is not going to be finished tonight. Um, uh, but uh, a lot of Christians get angry. You get angry. 
I've been angry. And we say, man, I, I thought my life would be changed. I thought, man, why am I not happy? Why am I, I don't have joy all the time? I know I'm going to heaven. I know I'm going to heaven. I know my sins are forgiven. I know God loves me. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And if you do self-examination, as we spoke about this morning, as we preached on this morning, you ask yourself, why am I not joyful? I've, led, I've had the opportunity to lead people to Christ. Amen. I've had the opportunity to feed hungry people and clothe, not necessarily naked, but naked people. I've had the ability to visit people in prison and literally do the Lord's work. What an incredible blessing it is to do that. And I'm over here with a scowl on my face. What, what is all that about? I'll tell you what it's about. It's the parable about the thorns choking out the cares of this world, choking us out, choking us out. I don't want to be choked out. I have, there's joy way down in there. It's about bringing it up to the top. Let it bubbling up out of the surface. I had um, a cold brew coffee the other day in a, in a can. I was looking forward to, to drinking it, but I had accidentally shaken it up and didn't register that I shook it up. And I was driving a semi truck and I popped it open. Pull over at the next rest stop, change into some different clothes, clean some things up. What had happened? I took the contents of the can, shook it up. When I shook it up, the pressure built inside. And what came in, what was inside of that came out. Well, as a born-again Christian who has, has, has experienced people being saved and baptized and people and, and, and reconciliation and redemption, folks, I've seen just about, I can't say I've seen it all, but I've seen a whole lot of spiritual things happen in church and outside of church where people come into Jesus, so to speak. And all that takes is, man, it just got to shake me up. Just shake me up. Start talking about the blood. Start singing about I'm not going to hell. Start talking about how good you, how the Lord looked down and how he reached down and touched me and how he reached down and saved me. And start, man, you let me hear enough of that. Some tears will start coming out. Some shouts will start coming out. Some, some joy will start coming out. Some noise will start coming out. Why? One, because it's my personality. It's a one, it's a way that I express. But because there's joy inside of there that comes out. I don't understand what shakes you, what moves you, what stirs you to joy. Well, is it in there? It's a lot of Christians, it's lying dormant because the wool has been pulled over your eyes that you've got to have these certain expectations from yourself and from others and from the world that will produce joy in you. And that's a lie from the devil. People have been watching uh, too many uh, charismatic preachers on TV once a week. You tune in once a week and see how happy they are on a pre-recorded service. So, it's not me, is it? Who's calling me? Nobody. Turn your phone off. Uh, I'm, I'll turn mine on. Do not disturb. Uh, uh, a lot of Christians, they're misguided. So, and, 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 and instead... Instead of watching all these people on TV and listening to all these crazy podcasts, what we need to do is, is read our Bibles. Identify the effect that you want. You know what I've been praying for? God, give me tears. God, give me tears. God, give me a burden for people. You know what I want as a pastor? I want power, love, wisdom, and understanding and tears. If I want those effects, I have to find out in the Bible what are the causes what are the causes? And it's just to look at the church heating bill. That's all that causes tears. No, uh, I do. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I want the effect. Uh, what effect do I want? And look up the cause that produces the effect and then do what the cause requires. Man, I want muscles. Okay, well, you got to go. You want the effect? Yeah, I like that effect. Okay, well, you got to go lift weights and do calisthenics and run. Well, I want, a, I want a slender body. Okay, well, lay off the Oreos. But I like Oreos. Well, I'm sorry. Oreos are shaped like this. If they were healthy for you, they should be shaped like this. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, let's start making triangle Oreos. Trick the people to think that they're healthy. Uh, healthy Oreos. <laughs> hey, that's the world we're living in, right? We can, 
Oreos are healthy if we say they are, amen. Um, but uh, 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 I'll say that again. F- identify the effect you want. Look up the cause in the Bible that produces the effect that you want. And then do what the cause requires. You did what it was, what was the, hey, I want to go to heaven when I die. I don't want to go to hell. What do I need to do? You need to do the cause. What was the cause? Jesus died on the cross that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall not be, shall, not, uh, shall be saved, shall be saved. Uh, uh, it is not by works of righteousness, uh, but according to his mercy, he saved us. And so many of the hundreds of other verses that go in, in uh, hand in hand with that about by faith, by, uh, by grace through faith. By grace through faith. And if you say, by grace, I'm trusting Christ. Okay, you got the effect. You got the effect. You're saved. Why? Because you did the cause. Same thing with joy and peace and contentment and happiness and a good marriage and child rearing and, and tithing and, 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 and uh, 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 prosperity and success. So once again, if you do not get joy, you do not get joy just because you get saved. But if you get saved, joy is available to you. So it is available. It is available. Now you have to ask yourself, do you have it? Do you have it? I have some. Of it. Do you have enough of it? Do you want more of it? Hey, joy is something that you can have a lot of. You can have a lot of. That you can have much of. You can have as much as you want. Joy unspeakable, the Bible says, and full of glory. Full of glory. Now I want joy. I hate being mad. I hate being sad. I hate being a dad. No, I hate, I hate see, it's me just choking around. Um, uh, I, 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 I want joy. I don't like walking around sad and despondent. And I hate, going, my, my dad is one of, um, uh, 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 he, he, sometimes he can read me as his son. He can know when to kick me in my pants, so to speak, or when to encourage me. And I need encouraged more than I need kicked in my pants, that's for sure. Uh, but he knows, he knows to help. Man, getting around my, my, uh, my kids, they're a joy to me. Getting around a church, I like being in church. It's a joy to me. It helps my spirit. It helps it. I want to get around the things that help my spirit. I don't like being down and despondent. I don't like it. So I don't watch the bears. I don't. <laughs> Stinking bears. I stay away from the things that drag my spirit down, and I stay away from the people that drag my spirit down. That's just to touch a couple. Next week, we're going to get into uh, uh, more of this joy thing about the biblical uh, cause of having the effect in our lives as joy. Jesus just, just said it, that your joy may be full. And a lot of Christians are walking around on very empty tanks of joy. You're just faking it till you make it. Well, let's stop faking it. Man, I want to have real joy. Why? Because, because the Lord. What else do I need to say? Because, because of God. Because he is worthy. Because this is worthy. Because his plan is worthy. And I don't want to be some mumbling, grumbling, griping, stinking Christian when the Lord comes back and finds me sucking my thumb and whining about the Lord's work. If he's given me every tool I need and every emotion I need to do the Lord's work willingly and happily and with joy, then I I want that. If that's what's going to make him happy, and who doesn't want to make the boss happy? I want to make the boss happy. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this evening. I thank you for all that you've given us all that you've done for us. Lord, I'd ask that you'd forgive us when our joy isn't full. I'd ask that you'd forgive us when we gripe and complain. And Lord, I know many Christians who, who um, Lord, we're like a, <clears throat> we're like a, a spinning top. Uh, one, dire- one moment we're spinning the, joy, the, 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 the direction of joy, and another day we're spinning the direction of, of complaining and regret and gripe and depression, the edge of insanity. Heavenly Father, we are emotional uh, creator, creations. Lord, I'd ask that you'd help us to, uh, the Bible says that he that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down without walls. Lord, help us. Lord, I think these two messages went hand in hand with each other this morning, now that I think of it. Knowing ourselves, knowing how to stay joyful, and then when our joy is running low, how to refill it. Lord, I'd ask that uh, we'd help, you'd help us to look in the mirror this week, yeah, spiritually, and do a, a, an examination and a checkup 
And man, my joy's low. I need to refill it. And then to be here next Sunday night to, to get some more of this. But in the meantime, let's study our Bibles. Lord, lead us to truths in your word and through uh, conversations with other believers that are blessings to us. Uh, Lord, we, we owe you a great, great debt. And I don't mean the sin debt. That's been paid for. But Lord, there's so much that you've made available to us that we've missed, that we've not grasped, that we've left laying aside. Help us to start picking it up. Start grasping the full word of God. Lord, bless us as we go about our way that you'd keep us safe. Help us to be a blessing to somebody through this week. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Miss Jennifer?